After the Ixians and the Riches, of whom we hear a little of in the Dune series, the next technically proficient race of humans in the Imperium is the Bene Tleilax, also known as the Tleilaxu. The Tleilaxu's knowledge of technology is not as machine oriented to the degree of the Ixians, and instead follows the paths of machine human interface, together with technologies involved with genetic manipulation, cloning, and mimicry. In the appendix on the terminology of the Imperium in Dune, we are given a reference to the planet Tleilax, described as the lone planet of Thalum, noted as a renegade training centre for Mentats, source of twisted Mentats. Their main purpose in Dune is to provide the Baron Harkonnen with his twisted Mentat, Pyder de Vries, who we are able to later deduce is in fact a Gola. Apart from this, the Tleilaxu are barely mentioned in the first Dune novel, and it is not until Dune Messiah that we begin to take real notice of them as very dangerous members of the conspiracy against Paul and his family. As the series progresses, the Tleilaxu become one of the most dominant political players in the Imperium, and the technologies which they develop and evolve over the course of the novel's timeline are of fundamental importance to the story. The Tleilaxu technologies however represent a double-edged sword, and the true nature of the Dirty Tleilaxu, as they are derogatorily known, remains a great mystery, as does the nature of Tleilaxu females. The first real instance of the Tleilaxu operating within the political machinations of the Empire is early in Dune Messiah when we hear them described as scientific amoralists who use face dancer disguises. Face dancers are a lower caste of Tleilaxu society and the equivalent of a human chameleon, in that they possess the ability to mimic other individuals, changing their height, weight, skin colouring, and even their voices to imitate almost perfectly the individual they have targeted. Skytail, the Tleilaxu member of the conspiracy against Paul and his family in Dune Messiah, is one of these face dancers, the one that possesses a greater degree of intelligence and autonomy than most of these engineered creatures that we encounter in the series. The Bene Tleilax, like almost all the species in the Dune series, are not aliens but in fact another branch of humanity, patriarchal in nature and focused on altering their evolution by genetic manipulation. Their social stratum is essentially twofold, the ruling Tleilaxu masters and their face dancer counterparts, who are essentially slaves and tools of war and statecraft to the Tleilaxu. In addition, the Bene Tleilax have a ruling council made up of masters known as Mashiks, who in turn have a leader known as a Mahai, and acts as an Abdul to the Tleilaxu people. The face dancers were initially created for entertainment, but over the years their ability to mimic has led to more Machiavellian uses. When talking to Farouk, a Fremen involved in the conspiracy against Paul and his family, Skytail reveals that he had toured as a part of a troop on Naraj, the same world that Farok had fought in during Moadib's Jihad. Skytail informs Farok that he is indeed a face dancer, and seems to have a resemblance to Duncan Idaho at this point, who Farok had once known. Farok asks Skytail if face dancers are really men, to which he replies that they are Jadaka hermaphrodites, and able to be either sex at will. After Skytail murders Farok and his blind son, he walks out of the room with the drugged daughter of Othim, one of Paul's former Feda King, his intent to kill Othim's daughter and take her form in order to gain access to Paul. The conversation with Farok also reveals a little of the Tylaxu technologies and how they are perceived by the peoples of the Imperium. The Tleilaxu are able to create technological replacements for lost biological organs such as eyes. Farok reveals to Skytail much of his reasoning for joining the plot against Moadib, a great deal of which revolves around his experiences on Naraj, where his son was blinded by a stone burner. Farok offers to buy artificial eyes from the Tleilaxu for his son, but he refuses, telling his father of his distrust of such devices which, are metal and he is flesh, and that such a union must be sinful, a contrivance left over from the prohibitions of the Butlerian Jihad. 
Skytail, although a clever and talented face dancer, is aware of the limitations of his mimicry, knowing a well-trained individual can sometimes spot a face dancer. When he presents himself to Paul in the form of Othim's daughter, Lichna, Skytail is able to fool Chani but not the Emperor himself. Paul nodded. He saw how Chani had been fooled, the timbre of voice, everything reproduced with exactitude, had it not been for his own Bene Gesserit training in voice and for the web of Tao in which oracular vision enfolded him, this face dancer disguise might have gulled even him. Training exposed certain discrepancies, the girl was older than her known years, too much control tuned the vocal cords, set of neck and shoulders missed by a fraction the subtle hauteur of Fremen poise, but there were niceties too. The rich robe had been patched to betray actual status, and the features were beautifully exact. They spoke a certain sympathy of this face dancer for the role being played. The Twi'laksu face dancers themselves progress in an evolutionary manner throughout the series, and as they do so, their talents at mimicry over the thousands of years have become increasingly harder to detect. By the time of the God Emperor, some three and a half thousand years after the rule of Paul, the Bene Gesserit state that the face dancers of the Twi'laksu are still mules despite all efforts to change that condition. They also curiously mention that the Tleilaxu have sent envoys to the Bene Gesserit, with the intention of embarking on a joint venture to produce a parthenogenic, female-only society that has no need for males. Leto II himself refers to them as mules, stating that they are closer to a colony organism, and when discussing this with Duncan Idaho, he mentions that this is a choice they made for and by themselves. The face dancers use their abilities in God Emperor of Dune to take over and copy almost everyone in the Ixian embassy on Arrakis, as a prelude to an assassination attempt on Leto II. The Bene Gesserit are alerted to this attempt and try to warn the God Emperor, and when the face dancers finally attack, they all change into the form of Duncan Idaho in an attempt at confusion, as Idaho is the only male in the God Emperor's army commanding the fish speakers. Leto finds the attack amusing, though wonders how his fish speakers will protect the real Duncan Idaho, only to discover that having mimicked Duncan perfectly, including his black commander's uniform, Duncan has stripped naked in order to be correctly identified by his own forces. Leto sees the attack as inept, stating that some 500 years previous, the Tleilaxu would have been more daring and intelligent finding it funny that for all their planning, their endeavour was foiled by one man simply taking his clothes off. Oddly enough, after having the Tleilaxu ambassador publicly flogged, Leto has the surviving face dancers, despite their obvious terror, perform for him in what is described as a parody of how Moadib's legions spread throughout the galaxy. With the death and metamorphosis of Leto II, the Dune series moves to its final two books, sometimes referred to as the Bene Gesserit books. Approximately 1500 years have passed since the death of Leto II, and the Empire is a vastly changed place, with the old political groups from before Moadib's empire returning to fill the power vacuum. After the death of Leto II, humanity goes into what is known as the Famine Times, which then lead directly to the Scattering part of the plan of the Golden Path. While many citizens of the old Imperium remain, large groups of humanity have left going far beyond the Empire of a Thousand Worlds. At this time, the Bene Tleilax are once again amongst the dominant forces of the political power plays that resonate throughout the Imperium. They begin to make moves against the various other powers in the universe, the Ixians, the Fish Speakers, and the Bene Gesserit. Their intent? To compromise these groups' leadership with new and improved face dancers. Within the last two volumes of the Dune series, new mysteries arise regarding the nature of the Tleilaxu. The first is to do with how they are viewed by other species, and we discover that this is a self-propagated means of propaganda, a meme designed to disguise the Tleilaxu's true nature. The principal Tleilaxu master, or Mahai, 
in these novels is Tylwith Waff, and he reveals this when interrogating a fish speaker captive. The vile, detestable, dirty Tleilaxu. The stupid Tleilaxu. The predictable Tleilaxu. The impetuous Tleilaxu. Even the prophet's minions had fallen prey to this myth. A captive fish speaker had stood in this very room and shouted at a Tleilaxu master, Long pretense creates a reality. You are truly vile. So they had killed her, and the prophet did nothing. How little all of those alien worlds and peoples understood Tleilaxu restraint. The Tleilaxu's agenda is also associated with their religious outlook, which, together with their actual physical and sexual nature, is kept a closely guarded secret. It is eventually with their knowledge of religions via the Missionaria Protectiva that the Bene Gesserit are able to discover this and begin their usual manipulations through established religious belief systems. Although the Bene Gesserit use religion as a political tool via their Panoplia Profecticus, they do however reveal to Miles Tegg that they themselves follow one Zen Sunni ritual, namely that of the Spice Agony. In discussion with his fellow counsellors, Waff notes that all of them were reflecting on their Sufi origins, recalling the great belief and the Zen Sunni ecumenism that had spawned the Bene Tleilax. The Bene Tleilax are therefore guided in all that they do, including the genetic and sexual alterations they have gone through, in order to carry out the divine will of the Prophet, whom they see as being represented in Leto II and the renewed sandworms of Arrakis that are his legacy. Like the Kwisatz Haderach breeding program of the Bene Gesserit, the Tleilaxu's creation of the face dancers also falls prey to an unconsidered random element. The face dancers who have been developed genetically and improved upon over the millennia to exactly mimic their prey are perfected to such a degree where their mimicry is too complete. The Tleilaxu knowing that earlier forms of face dancer are detectable by those with prescient ability, prana bindu training, and especially by the Bani Gesserit, seek to improve the mimicry of the face dancers to perfection, going as far as calling their mastery of the genetic language as the language of God. These face dancers are used to secure positions of authority amongst the fish speakers and the Ixians effectively bringing them under control of the Tleilaxu. Like all technologies in the Dune universe, whether they are biological or mechanical, as they evolve so too does the required technological response or countermeasure. The Bene Gesserit discovers that some of the new face dancers are capable of not just mimicking another person, but of taking the memories from such a person even after death. This is not mind reading, but a technique the face dancers use known as imprinting. The response to this new threat is the use of Cher, another interesting drug in Herbert's Dune universe whose purpose is to prevent such an action from being taken. However, the new face dancers with their perfection of their mimicry ultimately represent a form of biotechnological hubris to the Tleilaxu. The genetic engineering of the face dancers by the Tleilaxu to perfect their mimicry is untested over lengthy periods. This echoes Herbert's belief of the need to look at human endeavours in the long term, as is also examined in the ecological themes of the Dune series. At the beginning of Heretics of Dune, the Bene Tleilax are once again in a position of prominent political power, and are ready to commence their plans for supremacy using the new face dancers to take over prominent individuals within their opposing factions. The face dancers who have taken over such individuals have often been operating away from the guidance of a Tleilaxu master. This has resulted in the face dancers copying an individual to the point of complete mimesis, thus behaving in such a manner that there is no real discernible difference. To that extent, the Bene Tleilax masters have effectively lost control of what could be seen as their most lucrative technological advantage in the power plays taking place at that time. As a result perhaps of Herbert's attitudes to reliance and dependency displayed throughout the themes of the Dune series, 
the Bene Tleilachs have all but fallen by the time of the events of Chapter House Dune, with only one of their masters having survived, and now in Bene Gesserit custody. This individual is the Tleilachsu master Skytail, who is a Gola of the Face Dancer that was prominent in the conspiracy against Paul Atreides and his family in Dune Messiah. Skytail alone contains the genetic secrets of the Bene Tleilachs hidden within a null entropy tube, surgically secreted inside his chest. Within this tube lies the genetic material capable of reconstructing his race, face dancers and Tleilaxu masters alike, as well as the genetic material of a number of powerful individuals. Each master had carried this resource, a null entropy capsule preserving the seed cells of a multitude, fellow masters of the central kale, face dancers, technical specialists and others he knew would be attractive to the women of Shaitan, and to many weakling Pawinda. Paul Atreides and his beloved Chani were there, oh what that had cost in searching garments of the dead for random cells. The original Duncan Idaho was there with other Atreides minions, the Mentat Thufur Howitt, Gurney Halleck, the Fremen Naib Stilgar, enough potential servants and slaves to people a Tleilaxu universe. The prize of prizes in the Null Entropy Tube, the ones he longed to bring into existence, made him catch his breath when he thought of them. Perfect face dancers, perfect mimics, perfect recorders of a victim's persona, capable of deceiving even the witches of the Bene Gesserit. Not even Cher could prevent them from capturing the mind of another the tube he thought of as his ultimate bargaining power. From this point on, Skytail remains a prisoner for his own protection on board the new ship that the Bene Gesserit used to hide their new Duncan Idaho Gola and the captured honoured Matre Mirbella, who has been sexually imprinted by Duncan Idaho. It is Skytail's hope to one day recreate his people, and ultimately is forced to give up the secrets of the mysterious Tleilaxu axolotl tanks to the Bene Gesserit. The axolotl tanks are the other major technological innovation of the Bene Tleilax, and as with their genetically created face dancers, goes through a changing evolutionary process over the thousands of years from their apparent first use. Music